Welcome back. Last episode we managed to make Rubilith, today we are going to put it to good use. Before we even get started, we are going to prepare a setup that can make silicon out of a cobblestone generator. And, for the moment, we are going to manually input the carbon and oxygen for the last step of it. We will automate it later, for the moment, we have what we need. Actually, this was normal silicon, we need high purity one. So, we attach an add-on to purify the silicon. And there we have it, almost automated high purity silicon. Now, before we can use that, we are going to need a quartz crucible, which is made with malted silicon dioxide. The issue is that we don't have any container capable to handle it. They all melt at lower temperatures. So we are going to use something made of other materials, such as a wooden barrel. Next we are going to need a silicon seed. Higher tier machinery has a higher chance of making the recipe succeed, and, since I had no luck with the LV autoclave, I made an MV1. Once we have all the ingredients, we can start working on a silicon bowl. It will only take about 7 minutes. Then we refine it. And it was only when we were ready to cut it that we realized we need ultra pure water. To get that, we are going to use a day ionizer and a distillery. And cutting the wafers is going to take 4 more minutes. Luckily, we get back our silicon seed. Now that we have the raw wafers, we need some specialized treatment acid, in which we bath the raw wafers. Finally, we polish these with the help of some silicon dioxide slurry. Now that we finally have silicon wafers, we only need some photoresist and we are ready to finally use the rubilith. The first one shall be used for making an integrated circuit stencil, which we turn into a photolithography mask for ICs. Now we can etch our wafers in the UV light box, and we should probably get some protective glasses before staring at it. Then we do some more processing until we get some usable integrated circuits. And we do the exact same process to get a stack of RAMs. And we make BJTs that are weirdly simple to make. And the only thing that separates us from HV circuits is Electrum. So it is now time to go outside and touch snow. And I gotta say, the Electrum vein is a rather small one. Now, we need Electrum but we have the raw version. So, we start by roasting some mercury out of cinnabar, and we react that with the raw electrum to get silver and gold amalgam. We roast the later to get gold and retrieve the mercury. Finally, we alloy silver and gold back together. Thus making electrum. Now we can start working on the circuits. We start with the better version LV circuit and then we quickly scale that up to HV. As usual, we use our first HV circuits for an MV assembly machines. The next objective is to make an HV circuit with a better texture, so we shall start all the way from the plastic circuit boards. Polyethylene is expensive, so we shall use PVC which is way cheaper in ethylene amount. We quickly make it, then make boards and polish them until they become good usable, plastic circuit boards. But, before using them, we are also going to need some CPUs. But these require doped circuit wafers, which means high purity boron and high purity phosphor. So we proceed to quickly make the high purity phosphor. For the boron, we would need a multi-block that would also requires HV parts, so instead, we opt for making pure arsenic. However, Arsenic can't be used with phosphor, so we also make some high purity gallium. Now that we have two compatible high purity dusts, we can inject them with an iron implanter to make some dope wafer. Then we etch these to make some CPU wafers and work them all the way into CPU boards. Finally, we make some capacitor with the same recipe of GTNH so that we have all the parts to make a circuit that reminds us of the good old 1.7.10 times. To upgrade it, we are going to need some inductors, which require high purity iron. As usual, to get that, we have to do a bunch of chemical steps. 
But, after making Rubilith, everything seems like drinking a beecher of purified water. Now that we have high purity iron, we can use that to make nickel zinc ferrite, which we then extrude into rings. With the help of an assembler, we wrap some annealed copper around these and close it up with polyethylene, thus making a bunch of inductors. Which we use for making a processor assembly, the second kind of HV circuit. Upgrading it further requires a clean room. So, now that we are done with circuits, we only need the machine hulls, ergo, stainless steel before we go into the next tier. To get that, we first have to start all the way back from the MV energy hatch. So, we quickly make some ultra low power integrated circuits. Which we use to get the better energy hatches. Next we need the forge, which we have already made a while ago, but, before that, we have to start from a pressure swing absorber. That is a machine that will filter air with the help of a zeolite membrane to separate the nitrogen and oxygen components. And thus we have nitrogen and cheap oxygen. Next we need to complete the forge quest, so we tear down our arc furnace. And, once the quest is completed, we rebuild it. We are going to use it for making ferrochromium. However, the first step is to go in the beneath to gather some chromite. And that was not chromite but magnetite. Here we have the chromite. We throw everything in the input bus and thus we have the ferrochromium. Then we throw some stuff in the EBF to obtain ferrozilicon. The last material we need is carburized stainless steel. However, that requires an HV EBF. So we upgrade our EBF to have two MV energy hatches which we feed with a high power transformer. The issue with that setup is that it is going to eat up to 16 amps of LV. Which is exactly all the power we have right now. Anyways, we start the process, and it seems that it is working fine. The recipe is also not 512 watts but 240. So we are using slightly less than half of the maximum power of our whole base. And there we have the carburized stainless steel. And, while our EBF is working fine, we can't say the same of our arc furnace. The cool thing is that, in this pack, it's not as punishing as GTNH where stuff gets voided, nor as boring as other mods where stuff just works slower. If a machine loses power, the recipe process will go backwards. Or it will stall if it gets about half of the power. Anyways, it is now time to move all the ingredients we made into our rock furnace. And we forgot to add the gases. So we go back in the basement to take them and then we punch a couple of holes in the arc furnace. However, the structure does not form anymore, and the issue is probably that we have one less steel casing than the minimum. Since we need all of these hatches, the only solution I could think of is to swap the two LV energy hatches with one steel casing and one MV energy hatch. Now the structure is indeed formed and we can input the gases, thus starting the process for making stainless steel. This is a really hot substance, so we have to move it with our wooden drum. Finally, we solidify it to obtain the so wanted stainless steel which we use to rush an HV machine hull, thus unlocking the next tier, but, before doing anything else, we have to overhaul our base to do less manual processing. But that's for the next episode. Bye bye.